Morning, my name is John with the Pine Tree. I have the great pleasure of being here with uh, Supervisor Candidate David Singer. Thank you, John. And thank you for spending a few minutes with us. We're here in your, uh, we kind of invaded your law office here in San, San, San Andreas, and you're letting us set up here, so. <laughs> oh, sure. We, we got you out of the cold. <laughs> Now, this is one of the little chats for people to get to know uh, the people who are running. And one thing we've said before and needs to say again is, I think all those of us in the community owe a debt of gratitude to those who are willing to run. Um, it's not a decision that I, was, I guess would be taken lightly. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and well, for those who don't know you, tell us a little about yourself. All right, I, I, grew, uh, I grew up in Southern California. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have a, a bachelor's degree in political science mm -hmm. from Loyola Marymount University and uh, uh, intended to go to law school right out of college, but uh, you know, being you know, young and dumb, I guess, uh, a little, little uh, burned out from college and, uh, and actually at the time had an opportunity to uh, produce a record album and I'm thinking, well, guy, you can always go back to school, but how many opportunities do you have right. to record a record album? Right. And uh, so long story short, I got you know, busy with life and 19 years later wound up going back to law school. Very nice. So I guess for those who are interested in the music career, what 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 genre? What did you? What type of music do you guys pursue? Well, I, I I'm pretty much old school rock and roll, uh, right. the, the classic stuff, but uh, really interested in blues and okay. some jazz. And so I guess um, you know one of the things because you're campaigning against uh, to replace uh, the incumbent supervisor Russ Thomas. Now he's known for doing uh, national anthems at the so. Would you would that be a spot you would slide into in a different? Uh, I have heard a supervisor Thomas sing, and he and he has a good voice. I, I suppose I could uh, accompany him on drums sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what drove you to run? Well, when I moved up here in uh, June of two thousand seven, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I have a degree in political science. So I've always right. taken an active interest in my local right. politics wherever I've been. This is my first time running for public office, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I've always followed it, and uh, I'll get up and would get up and speak occasionally at council meetings or whatever if I, there was an issue that, mm -hmm. that struck me particularly. Uh, when I moved up here, I just started watching what was going on here, and uh, I guess it would be about the time there was a lot of uh, turmoil regarding the uh, community development agency. Right. Um, so I started following that, and it just I got to thinking, how, how could this be happening when I see all this? You're kind of chaos going on, and, yeah. and you know it's 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 got to be happening because the board of supervisors is letting it happen. At least you know some of the board members are letting mm -hmm. it happen. Um, and just comments that I heard people in my community making regarding it, and uh, when I got to talking to people, not only about that issue but some of the other issues, mm -hmm. uh, I was getting a lot of comments uh, from people saying that they. They felt there was a disconnect between themselves and, and the current supervisor. And that kind of inspired me to, to, to run. I started really thinking seriously about it a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, realizing that this was going to be the, uh, the, the re-election year, uh, I decided to throw my hat in the ring, figuring I could bring something to the table that this community could benefit from. That was a very um, troubling era to cover as well from us on a news perspective. And I think it's one of those things that, um, in some ways, I'm surprised it hasn't been more of an election issue as of yet. It's just been one of those, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a yeah, you're right, it was a very troubling time in county government. It, it, it was, and I, we we're still kind of seeing the repercussions mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I mean, uh, planning and, and building virtually has come to a standstill, partially because of the economic right. times we're in, right. but partially because nothing could get through the process at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, as you know, and most people know, when construction comes to a halt, this, the, the effect of it ripples throughout s many segments of the economy. Especially in rural communities. Absolutely, like this absolutely. Depend on that sector. Um, so if elected, what, what do you, would you try to, what would some of your goals be? What do you think you'd try to do? Well, I think one of the most important things right now, and, and this is good, the, the next probably four or five years mm -hmm. are going to be very, very difficult. Uh, I'm looking at, we're kind of in survival mode at this point. Uh, it's, it's going to be trying to, to do more with less money. Right. Um, and we need to start planning now. Part of why we're where we're at is, is maybe some short-sightedness to uh, not take the steps necessary to start developing some of the infrastructure we might need for future okay. business growth. 
but primarily I see that we need to change our attitude towards business. We haven't been a very business friendly county for a right. while. Uh, and we need to actively go out and start recruiting businesses to come here uh, because we need the jobs. Frankly, uh, I mean, this is kind of a bedroom community type of, mm -hmm. type of county to begin with, so there's always going to be more people than there are jobs. Right. But we have to start um, reducing that job deficit, mm -hmm. as I call it, and start creating more jobs. And you know, somebody was saying, and I should have asked before we started the camera rolling, but do you have an econ um, economic development background, don't you? Isn't that one of, the, one of the things that you've done in the past? I worked for the county of San Bernardino for almost nine years, okay. just, just prior to moving up here, actually. Okay. <clears throat> and seven and a half of those years were in the economic development department. Got it. What were some of the things that you saw in that, you know, in a larger metropolitan area that maybe we could we could do to or improve or you know, to use here? Well, one of the things the County of San Bernardino did is mm -hmm. they filed an application with the state to develop an enterprise zone okay. in, in, a, in a part of uh, San Bernardino County. Mm -hmm. And for people who don't know what that is, is once you've been designated an enterprise zone, there are tax benefits, uh, tax incentives available to employers that will relocate there and, okay. create, and create job opportunities. Now you get, um, you know, I guess you could help with uh, payroll taxes, that type of stuff, for you know, for a period of time for bringing in new employees it, on, and that is that one of the things that that's part of it, and you can actually get a tax credit for each employee that Got that it. you hire. Got so it. uh, it's a tremendous benefit to, okay. to, to the businesses, and, okay. and again, it creates the job opportunities that we need here. And for some people that may have been to the candidates' nights. Uh, I've talked about bringing in retail, but I want to let people know I'm not talking strictly about retail. I mean, right. we definitely need some some manufacturing and other other. Because people get here. scared of that big box word up here. They do. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they do. And since you brought it up, I mean, I'm not afraid to go there. Uh, I mean, kind of the, the the running joke, and I've heard it since I moved here, is you can't buy a decent pair of tennis shoes in right. Calaveras County, and amongst other items that you can't get, mm -hmm. and. But we all, I mean, I know there's I do the, it. There's always the underwear and socks thing. Well. There's that too. There's that too. But we all, I, I think we all do this. I mean, and I know every four to six weeks, I, because I live in Rancho, I, I usually either go to Stockton or Jackson, mm -hmm. but I call it going into town for supplies. Yeah. And yeah. we all go and we stock up and get those things that we can't get locally. And we're pumping millions and millions of dollars into their economy, mm -hmm. and we're not helping our own. Right. So to, to that end, I think we, we need to start looking at that. And I know there are some people who say, yeah, but it's going to impact the, the amount of traffic on our roads, and then it's going to cost more to maintain our roads. Well, if you really think about it, you know, we're driving across the entire county to get to Stockton and Lodi and Jackson and Sonora. So really these shorter trips. So you could trips, actually make a case for less, for short, shorter trips rather than. Absolutely, and less yeah. gas and yeah. everything else. So the big box stores are now green. They can be. They can be. <laughs> and actually, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them will actually share in the costs of developing the infrastructure. Right. And when it's done correctly, uh, they absolutely will. Ah, so we could actually, if we attracted some of the the core businesses we needed, you know, it depends if it was a large enough. We might be able to get, able to get some of our infrastructure done at the same time as a piggyback. Thing. Sure, I mean, we have rim fees that, right. uh, quite frankly, are, have, have driven a lot of business away. It's mm -hmm. scared them off. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's a whole other problem, and maybe we need to reevaluate how we collect rim fees yeah. and maybe find a way to spread them out over time. But if we look at developing the infrastructure, really, it's an investment. It's an investment for the county. It's an investment for the, for the, the company that's, that's participating. But in the long run, they both benefit, and right. the, the long term. Um, so I guess in closing, if, if somebody's you know standing in front of that ballot, you know ballot, what um, what would you like to leave them with? What do you, why would you know? What do you think of a mark by your name would be the right one to do? Well, what I really want people to know is, is I have a, a really strong customer service background, and I really believe that that county government really exists to serve the people. And there are some, uh, most of the county departments are pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. Some are better than others, and some probably need a little bit of improvement. But we should never tell somebody that comes into a county office, no, we can't do that. There are going to be times where regulations might not allow us to do it the way they want it done, but I think our job really is to help them achieve what they want. And, and if it means kind of counseling with them, working with them, okay, okay, we may have to modify this a little bit to bring it within compliance of the rule. But try to 
So help and try to help them through the process? Absolutely. I mean, and I think probably as a supervisor, most of what we're going to be doing is putting out those kinds of fires. People right. are going to come into us with problems, and, and it's our job to, to try to, to help them with that. And the other thing I think I, I bring is uh, I've worked in a number of different environments, and I feel like that I can work with, with anybody. And um, it's, there's a lot of respect that goes on. I mean, uh, obviously there are things with a lot, of, some, some of the things I've seen the current supervisors do I don't like, but I'm not gonna go and throw them under the bus because if I get elected, I'm gonna have to work yeah, with these very issues. same people. And I guess in, the, in fairness to some of the things we you know a lot is, lots of times from the outside looking in, we don't always know all the closed session items. We don't, I mean, there's a little, some of our perspective issues that sometimes we may miss, but. Yeah, and it, it, that really comes down to communication. I mean, my, my philosophy in terms of uh, what the supervisor should do is one, they need to be an educator. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to put the information out there to the constituents so that so that they have the same information we do. I mean, I, I get to sit back and go, you know, man, is my supervisor crazy? Well, he, he, he may not be, he's probably not crazy, but he, he just has information that I don't have. So let's give the information to everybody so they can make informed choices. And then uh, I, I've told people both in Copperopolis and in Rancho that at, at both of the debates we had that I would commit to having community forums, community roundtables every three months in both areas, two of them, mm -hmm. so that I can give not only give them the information, but then we can discuss it and right. try to reach some kind of consensus. And the other component is me to be the listener. I want need to, to listen to the feedback you're given, giving to me. I mean, I might have my idea based on the information I have of how it should go. Right. And you, and you might agree with me after you have the information. You might not. But then we come up with a consensus. And then lastly, uh, I'm your advocate. I need to go to the board and put your desires above my own. I mean, if you disagree with me, then that's that's what we go in and that's how we advocate because that's what representative form of government is supposed to be about. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, Sean. It. Thanks for running. Thank you for Thanks. coming to the office. You got it.